Let's go ahead and create first assets that we're going to use in 2D. Of course, you can render everything in 3D and import all scenery inside and work this way. But I find out for the time spent workflow and easy to use, it's much um, easier to use it single elements and compose after inside the Photoshop. So we're going to do create our first model. And for this, I'm just as example, we're going to create gargoyles. Um, this is a dust central where you have it, all of your items that you purchase or own, whatever. So it's easy to access this way. And actually, I prefer dust central better than going inside dust studio and navigating this way. But we can work either way. So right here, when you have it, for example, um, we're going gargoyles. We'll go ahead open. And you'll notice it's got all products and it's showing us so we can go select. However, if you prefer, you can also just go inside all products um, and just type top, uh, type whatever name, even the safe way and it's fine. So either way will work. Uh, one, you can just go through all your content and find this way. The other one's the same. I will for now just use it search inside because I have more than one item I'm going to use. And that is easiest way to access this. So now I'm going to open models. We'll go to figures and preload our first um, Gargoyle HD model. Okay, right here we have our model. Let me switch to smooth shading. One thing I find out, um, if I preview, I can go to NVIDIA Array array and it's worked very well for me to preview some lighting and other things, but it does have a little bit slow respond, at least on my machine. Um, but I'm sure it's majority machine will have it the same way because I'm running a 2070 RTX card. It's not the latest one, but it still should be run quite a bit fast. And I have a 16 core processor and plenty 64 gig RAM. So it should be more than enough to do for this. But again, smooth shader that will help me to set up properly. Next, let's go click back. We'll go inside the uh, poses. And there you can select different poses. Usually I can go through all of them. Um, setup for me, pause is important to do before I stop lighting because based on this, I can position different lights. So let's say um, we'll go just select one of them. Of course, if error happened because we did not select to what to apply. So let's select Gargoyle on our top. So it's, um, I don't like how it's look. We'll go check maybe a couple different type of poses. Maybe this one is flying kind of. Mm, again, I'm one thing it does help if you have it some kind of sketch how you want it. And I do have a sketch or what I want to see in my head, not on a paper or that. there. This one is will work. Um, so let's go. We'll select this and right now You'll notice my aspect ratio 10 by 10, so it's a square. Depend what you need render. I maybe cut down top and bottom, have it a little bit more wide so I can bring in. Uh, but overall, this is about right aspect ratio right now. Next, I'm just looking how I want to see from each angle. So I think like center straightforward will look kind of nice. I don't like necessary tail this position so we can select and uh, like let's go just to rotate a little bit up and maybe just slightly a little bit off okay so just kind of showing a little bit more dimension because it does not look very good okay when you're done with pause, what I want to do it is assign new camera. So we'll go create new camera and we'll want to select copy active perspective view. So in this case, if I need to switch or rotate around, I can easily do it, but we'll still have it now. Camera is set with this preview so I can go back and forth between all of those views. So next, let's go to set our lights. And first important for me, we have it by default light. So if we click render, we'll have this, but I want to select our distant light first. Okay. And we'll switch to drop down to view from distant light and distant light. This is think about this. It's a massive 
like almost sunlight going from one point. However, by default, values of the light luminosity is quite a bit low. So we needed to bring just a little bit up and we'll adjust maybe later. But also, I think this is kind of like our major ambient. And if uh, you photo shoot before your model with specific lights, try to match maybe a scenario you want to do or keep it same with other ones. In this case, for me, I'll just use generic from top. And this is always safe way to do it. Because we, if we export this model inside the Photoshop, we can always add very easy uh, shadows. And if we have a symmetrical light, we can easily put it on one or other side and make directional light. However, if we had it from one side, it will be much harder to kind of switch or adjust this. Okay, so we're done this way. Next, let's go click and select new spotlight. This is, will be our key light. And we'll just have it active as well. Let's go switch down to our spotlight. We'll zoom out. Okay, and then with this, we can also a little bit draw, kind of give it more punch of this in specific area. And I'm going from the side. And the reason I'm going from there, this is where my key light was when I was photo shoot with the model. So I'm kind of trying to match my key light. Okay, if we go switch back to our camera view, you can see now we have some shadowing in this area, which will be if we have our key light. And I think this time it's safe for us to switch to NVIDIA iRay. So this it will take a little bit time, but it will apply all texture and you can see how it's come up more accurate. So I can see the lighting where it's coming. Um, I don't want to use uh, these necessary materials. For this, let's go back now. And we're going to use it Gargoyles Alternative Skin. Let's go to Materials. And I want to use it Bronze. So I want to be sure that my gargoyle is selected and I will just click on the bronze color to apply it. Okay, and uh, take again little, a little bit time till IRA will re-render with new materials and I think this is look more as like bronze or stone, whatever you like it. Um, this is overall very nice pack from um, gargoyles from the DAS uh, studio. I think it's come up with the uh, skins, presets, some other ones. And of course, just watch for the sales because I don't remember how much I pay, but it was very reasonable price. Actually, very, very good one. And I know I will use this in many of my compositing, so it's very good. You don't necessarily, if you don't want purchase or you feel uncomfortable, you don't need it. I'm going to make a pack with specific pre-render poses and a tutorial so you can kind of use them if you need it, that may help you. Uh, but this is overall, I want to show you the process, how I create. So if you want it, you're always welcome to do by yourself. Um, Does Studio by itself, it's free application. Uh, only what you're paying is for the content to use. And one thing, honestly, I need to say, uh, Does Studio, it's free application and UI sadly is not as polished as it could be or work with other application. So if you ever work with applications like Cinema 4D, um, 3D Max, Vu, or other ones, you'll familiar, you will find out some key binding or something. It's not very intuitive and it does, sadly. I think they need to work a little bit more on the UI part of this. Okay, so right here we preset our model. Now we're ready to go to the render mode. And then render setup, we'll just go click where is all and notice I'm rendering 8,000 by 8,000 pixels. This is my minimum render. I always try to render as high as a lot of pixels count as possible because that way when I photo shoot on my camera it's shooting about 9,000 pix 9, pixels by um, something like 7,000 I don't remember but it's 42 megapixels camera so it shot a big stuff image and I want to match some of this resolution so I don't want upscale introduce over um, some artifacts. Scale down is always better than upscale. Okay, next, um, aspect ratio, you always can just uh, uh, reduce. For example, let's go back 10 here. We can always increase, and this way we can zoom closer 
what I'm trying to do is utilize as much as possible over all of this stuff because we don't necessarily need top. We still have our 8,000 pixel wide, but we just cut some of this area we don't need render. It's just mostly for the size. And an important part, other ones, what I recommend to do it is going down with a dry ground, turn it off. So you'll notice it will remove shadows. We don't need those shadows because they're okay if you think they will match lights, but many times I find out or they're out of the cut or they're not necessarily matching, so I end up removing them again. So this way I can create and preset. So the lighting, again, this is a very simple lighting. I set up just one light from side. We have it all this ambient with the distant light. We also have this side light, which is given us our key light, matching light that was in the studio. And I think this is ready. If I have it more than one light, I probably go set up. And if you need modified, again, easiest way to do, be sure you switch to smooth shaded. So now you can actually rotate and adjust much, much easy faster because otherwise it will a little bit sluggish when you do with IRA selected. So when we're done, let's go ahead and click render. And the render, it will take some time. Um, just let you know, this is very important to have a very good GPU and a video card and everything because it is a lot of will be going on this. The Gargoyle, it's supposed, I don't have any translucency on this or other things, so it should be gone quite a bit faster. Maybe uh, take 10, 15 minutes, so it's not that bad. Um, some effect, like for example, when I have it wings with translucency enable and lights going through them some of them <laughs> took about even on my machine take maybe about six to eight hours per wing to render so it's take a long time on a machine so it's one another reason i say um sometimes it's by time consuming how you spend time it's much easier to buy pre-render pack and just use it this way instead by yourself but anyway so you can see it's kind of going creations and uh, let me move this away screen and i will just preview and you can see we already have kind of going our render okay right there let's just a little bit adjusting and it's beautiful details you know we have a nice texturing going on Okay, all what is right now is doing passes over and over to render to um, look better. So I'm going to pause this video till render is completed and we'll continue after it's done. It's already here, render is completed and it's actually took exactly five minutes, actual four minutes, 59 seconds, something like this, <laughs> very, very close. Uh, next, we're going to save and by default, I'm saving as PNG. I found out it's worked very well for me because it does preserve all transparency, everything that I needed. I mean, simple, just drag and drop, very easy way to do it. And um, let's go call, call as Gargoyle 6. Then click on save. Uh, no, I don't want to replace it. Apparently, I already have this. Let's go try 7. Um, what's happening many times I when I create it, I just will render them in a different um, Gargoyles different poses and everything so I can use it and easy to put it in and out this way um, This is also helpful if I want to replace and also You can render one pose and if you do this be sure you can just render slightly different variation of these poses uh, Many times, if you build your own collections, you can just render in one pose like this if you have a generic lighting, not a specific angle. And after you can always flip horizontally inside the Photoshop. So you are getting like two files instead of one. But overall, um, I think this will work very well. And again, if you my position was around chest level, it's where there was photo shooting. If you photo shoot from low, you can move your camera up and down just to match camera position um, when you're done with the model before the compositing. And you don't necessarily need just to use it model that you photo shoot. 
you can also download it model or create model inside the studio and compositing this way what is a video what i try to show here is that you don't necessarily need to spend times and hours just the compositing inside like the studio you can render ingle, single individual components and use them after inside the photoshop to put all your scenery together and it will be faster easy and you have more control um, as well in another video i'll show you how you can export this some assets like large assets from the dust studio and use the application like vu and creating this way and the reason is why i'm doing inside the vu because it's much faster it's fun easy to work with lighting and everything when you try to do this inside the dust studio sadly somehow it's handle object and memory it's getting very unresponsive in this way so single elements work always better in this case uh, let's go ahead and open right now the our bridge to select the image we want it so let's go ahead we have several photos here um i'm probably just going to select this photo for now um open inside the camera raw to prep process and uh, before we actually start pre-processing in camera raw let me show you a couple settings that i kind of recommend one be sure you're working in color space that is your was photo shooting with it will help you to keep it constant colors and you didn't see that much different like color shifting or other things my camera is set on adobe rgb so i have it same and i'm using 16-bit channels many times by default it will set to 8-bit 16-bit will provide us better smoothness in the gradients and other um, effects so we won't have it fringing and i do like um a little bit this kind of wider range or a depth of the colors and shadows i can work with and i always can reduce to 8 bit if needed uh, with the draw with using 16 bit definitely it will take more memory to store it it will process just a little bit longer on some filters and not every filter will work also my resolution is set to 300 pixels per inch so it's a print resolution um that is a uh, settings just on the bottom so you can click right there to preview this is photo was shot on a canon of r5 and you notice it's our resolution 8000 pixels by 5000 um couple things need be retouch i already see i had some right there but that is okay we'll work on this uh let's go take first our highlights and bring them down notice when we bring highlights down it does recover some in white areas and mostly it is almost necessary to bring the down highlights when you work with the shiny like sparkly because otherwise you will have a too much um lost information some of those areas but when we brought down our skin kind of darken we lost some of the depth with that we're going to restore our shadows we don't necessarily need to bring all the way up um and it depends on model of your camera how well it's work with dynamic range um r5 does very well with the shadow so i don't have it so much noise in a dark area so in this case i can bring just slightly up but change this depend on what camera you're using how it does sharpness because the canon r5 have it in camera anti alsing i'm going to restore original sharpness a little bit to bring about 70 somewhere between 60 and 80 will work very well next let's restore our skin uh, kind of dimensions depth for this one we'll switch to luminosity on color mix and you can see if we bring orange it will bring a little bit more on the skin so we'll just bring slightly up maybe about plus 20 somewhere like right there and same you can do with the red as well just bring slightly up that is a restore some of that um, color down that will last with highlights notice it does not really impact our white highlights on the shiny which is kind of nice it's what we try to do bring down uh, overblowing whites there but keeping kind of dimensions with the, um, our skin tone uh one thing to keep it in mind the color it does not represent for us shape the luminosity it what does and if we take for example our saturation and stake all the way down you can still see all this 
shape and that is because highlights and shadows dark and white it's what represent for us it's what make it the shapes color will add more additional information but it is not vital in this case so let's go ahead bring um back our saturations to zero okay and i will just type zero here be sure that if you're using your chromatic abbreviation is enabled and use profile correction that is depend if you like it or not how your lens look this is more from artistic approach i'll just keep it on and i'm going to open as normal image inside the photoshop okay let me switch from my screen and by the way um this is for a new collection of dark wing that i created in a render if you're interested in this it's angel link it's very uh, big collections of the high high resolution wings which is was backlighted another one so it's kind of take a long time to to make that collection and i hope you will like it i'll post a link for this lay below but what i want to do actually you know what let me close this one we don't need this right now but we'll go and work on this image um before we begin i can say i probably want to add gargoyles around but for that we'll need make this image a little bit bigger let's go select the crop tool and i want to be sure it's a content aware enable okay let's go zoom out right there and now we can increase so i don't want to increase big size i will increase in small chunks and that's for the reason i don't want to uh, Photoshop grab it or take long processing I want preview what this will does but I want to increase over all space around the model is where we're going to put it our gargoyles and I want to make them big kind of significant so they will give it this mass presenting around them okay so we'll go right there we'll go now increase a little bit more and after this we're going to import some of those gargoyles see how they will look um, some of the effect like for example clouds maybe not work here so we're going to replace them maybe with the ground or some other things we'll see how it will come up but i think um, we even just replace with some like rock kind of materials or texture that probably will work very well don't worry about like these repetitions areas here and there this is again all will be um replace it and normally i probably will just go right here so it'll be one third on her eye and we'll just increase slightly more and this is about right and let's bring it one wider and she's kind of low, almost in the middle this is nice to rule about one third because if you're going you want to keep it like in the corners where the attention will be drying or on a line like with your eyes which is will be a nice a point for view when you look on the image okay i think at this time let's bring some gargoyles in and see um what we have so this is one we rendered just recently and you can see we can put it just behind her actually no this is a little bit different but we can put it like one behind maybe even increase run right there okay so that is will be one and it's nice things about there are smart objects so it's meaning we can rescale very easy without worrying about losing some quality on this so the next let's put some um, on the side of her and this is a little bit different i rendered before but here's one we can put it on side probably around here make smaller and I'm just looking because the wings I don't want wing cover her face or anything but I think like right there okay so that will be another one and we always can increase if you want to include wings with all height okay and let's go bring one on another side I think this pose will should work and I want to shrink to about the same size visually. Like right there. And we'll put it this on that side. Okay. 
So what we have, we'll have it one behind her, kind of guarding, and two seat on a side. Um, one thing with the wings, what I see, they are, let's select the background, they're a little bit out, so we can go expand, and we can just drag to expand this. Okay, and maybe longer this way, because she's in the middle. Again, content to wear. Uh, let's see, I think I did not select content to wear, so maybe cancel that one. Yep, I was right, so we'll undo this. Let's go to select. Okay, uncheck content aware, so it will going a little bit longer. I want this kind of wings be in there. Okay, and just like right there, I think. Okay, let's go ahead. Okay, so right here we extend it. Um, you know what? Let's go. We have some rocks. Let's go and just drag in some floor and we'll see if it's the floor will be okay. So right here, I think this is floor will work. I'm just going to set with the horizon. That's what we almost want to match. So I think this will kind of going maybe like right there because I want covered some of those um, clouds. I don't necessarily want them. But I think this way we'll put it. Okay, and next we'll need to put it something on a backdrop. Um, we'll have some of those rocks right here texture so we can apply some of the rocks texture on this and play a little bit more. Or we can also create something interesting backdrop as well for this. So let's go check. I have some alien backdrop. And let's see if that will work. So right here we have it, but this is kind of like alien, alien type. So sci-fi, I don't think that will work. Need it a little bit more um, kind of underground. And I think this one may work. Um, that's what I like to do. I like to render different backdrop because you can see how it is easier to um, work if you have a some of those elements to use. So I think that will work, kind of put it on the background behind the model and we'll just make it darker as well. There's a drop right there. So we'll have it model in the back. So I think that will work for us right now. Okay, now the fun part. Now we need to take all of these models and start bringing in. Let's go start with, of course, um, basic we'll start with our backdrop in this case and I'll hold down alt or option on the Mac and you click on a mask that will create a kind of like black mask so it's meaning all transparent we don't see any of these um, elements coming through so next we can use the white brush and you can see we can brush in some of that masking bring in those um, stuff so it will have it um, sometimes what I do I like to create also take pen tool and just go around model to add with a, some pen kind of masking out and that is work but also if you're just using and let's go with 30 percent but if you're also using um, just brush you can still do kind of nice and then this way i also see the transparency coming through our original background and it's creating that uh, texturing effect very good kind of going on that okay actually let's go to white i think i switched to the gray so yeah i want to white color And we'll just go by the hair very slightly right there. And we can also just remove a little bit. I'm not sure. Maybe we'll put some, some other stuff around here. We'll see. 
if it's need to be. Maybe some rocks or something, put it around that area. Okay, right here we have it slightly with our texture, which is kind of nicely applied. Okay, let's reduce something. And we can come back later. This is again, we just trying to add some effect here. Okay. okay. Let's go hide that stuff out. We almost need to have it some throne for her or something. Maybe we'll we'll add throne afterwards. Or some any other like seating element. I think I may have it thrown. Let me go look right here. That is the throne that we can put it just behind and cut off. Okay, let's go apply here. And for the throne, we can use it actually a pen tool. So let's do that because it will be a little bit faster. Okay, and we'll just go select here. Okay. There you go, just something. And it is chisel from rock, so we don't really. Um, this current model is a little bit low resolution, don't worry about it too much. It will be going in a shadows mostly. So we should be fine. Right here, I think this is actually one of the old, old model from the studio with a lower polygon and not a great texture. But you know what? It still worked just fine. I think I used this throne for multiple compositings before. Okay, right there. And just uh, Till I'm doing this, yes, I do actually create my own models. I do modeling, and uh, but what I find out when you compositing, sometimes it is um, much faster just to find somebody who already done this, and you can buy it for at a dust studio for really inexpensive price that save you time to do this. Or if I can find already pre-render like I'm going to Invanto Elements or any other ones. If I can find somebody pre-made, I will just buy that because it's much faster. I don't need to do a lot of like this stuff. So if I find somewhere somebody already pre-cut for me, I'll just go buy it from there and it's much easier. And they're relatively inexpensive. So this is a good part of this. So you'll save your time and you Plus, you'll have it in collection if you need to use it. Okay, we're going very close, almost done here. There you go. Just select a few more. And I don't really worry too much about this because we probably go cut bottom anyway. Just like right there. Let's go select it. Yeah, we'll go there. We're cutting. Um, right here let's add i just found it's kind of you see it through this yeah, so will add on one side let's go to second as well there you go oops and right click and says create vector mask so you can see now we have this throne kind of selected that way I can also now preview command T and just says okay it's probably go something like right there or maybe even smaller and I'm not sure maybe just remove also this bottom top top part we'll see how it will go because I just want display with her so we're going to go ahead um, 
take a little bit of time to transform or apply it. The one nice thing about we have the vector mask, but we also can use it the rasterized mask. So if we click on create new mask, you can see right here. So we'll have it also two type of mask on one layer. So this moment I can easily just going and start with the black color, paint the model inside. I don't worry about over painting too much because I'll go back and restore it right now. I'm kind of just try to let's go even you know maybe um, 50 percent on opacity so it will be faster i'm just try to see how it will go yeah i think this way will look better if we go right there and we don't need it we'll hide some of those elements yep so yeah let's remove this we have the floor yeah, I think this way um, we kind of start blending a little bit better. Okay, let's go to zoom closer to our model. And the one thing I like to use um, with these blend tools so we can blend a little bit more natural with the background colors. Okay, right here. And because we shot on a gray, it should blend it actually very well together. Okay, we have a shoulder. A little bit of hair. We probably need it kind of blend in. And I'm not sure, I maybe cut this back away. You know, because we leave it this element, so it will show kind of her cancellation. But we may remove it back all the way, depend. Okay, so let's do it this way. One thing now, I want to go jump to our model just to retouch her because I kind of uh, preset some elements. I know how they will go compositing. So now I can um, fo focusing a little bit more on the model. So right here, we'll select from our layer zero. And the first what I want to do is create new layer. Uh, it's called retouching. So we'll go to do that one. And we'll use it our healing brush. And healing brush, you actually need to select simple texturing and do after. I prefer this because that way it will perform a little bit more accurate to the texturing. But overall, I think she's look actually okay, except the right here. This one is what I don't kind of like it. It's come through that. Um, and the problem is if we try to work like this on a skin, it's come up with the problems um, as well. If we try to do, we could actually just go like this, try to hide with the shiny things. But then we needed to use another techniques to kind of hide that even more. And yeah, we'll do that a little bit later. So just to hide this underskirt. Okay, select again. The darkness will happen because of some of the lighting elements, which is okay. We'll fix this. And if it's happened, just reselect another sampling and try right there going. So we'll go right there with the dark elements. We'll just let's select. There you go. Okay, now we'll select, I'll just paint over. Okay, try select closer. Okay, I think this is kind of almost like hiding. We do have a problem with uh, some lights. Let's look over. Um, contrast too much so we'll need it soften this out but it's kind of fixing I think some of this okay so when we're done with this let's go next um, smooth skin and for this all layers hiding only are available we press ctrl shift alt e command option alt e on a Mac 
This is take all visible layers, merge them and creating brand new layer out of this. So this way we can apply just smoothness in the area we want it. So we'll go filter, noise, we'll go to dust and scratches. And some of this process I do over and over. If you watch some other videos that I created, they're very, very similar to this process I'm doing. And the reason is because I found they work very well and no point to reinvent the wheel when your existing tools or existing workflow very well work for you. So don't feel um, any other ways when you need to kind of change. Don't reinvent your wheel. Use the tools or techniques that you know it's solid and will work. So right here we have it smooth. Let's go Alt Option, click on a mask. It will take hide all of them. And now we're ready to smooth out. I don't want too much applied to the smoothness. Okay, oops, let's go X to white so, because I want to actually apply. So I want to be in a white color. Um, I don't want too smooth, but I want to add enough as a painting effect. And right there, you can see on her skin before and after. You see how much it's smooth out. When you do little by little, it doesn't notice this way. And her eyes, he's interesting because you see how they're a little bit darker. We're actually going to dark them. I think instead bring them up, let's make them all the way black. Okay, I think that will even make a little bit more evilish look. Um, be sure we smooth here, we'll smooth on the hands. Careful when you start smoothing. You'll notice I avoid hair, lips, and other stuff. We have a tattoo. Here's another thing to avoid. So because of that, I'll just little bit smooth one hand and just try avoid it with a tattoo going, just only with a knot of this. Okay, let's go to smooth on a leg. And we can just slightly even smooth a little bit edge of this. So it will remove all that contrast, make it look kind of before. Okay. A little bit bigger brush, so we go faster. Okay, right there, a little bit on our foot, not too much. I like some of those imperfections, they like give it us a more realistic look. Okay, right there. Let's go on the edge slightly, smooth this edge down here. The other things we can try and we'll see how it's work next step. So um, when are we going to add paint to the hair? You can see if it's on a dress will look nice as well. So for this again, Control Shift Alt E, Command Option Alt E. Um, let's go call this hair. And we're going to use the filter. Uh, let's go to stylize. Oil painting. Okay, where's my stylize? There you go. Oil paint. And we're going to select for this. And let's go to scale down actually. So 0, 1 scale, 10, 10, detail 1, lighting all set. Click OK. We should have it a very strong um, effect, but I want even more. To add even more brush effect, we'll go to Filter, Sharpening, and Unsharp Mask. So we'll add even more to the luminosity, to the contrast between all those areas. And you can see right here it's quite a bit more. Let's click OK and see how the dress dress look quite a bit interesting right now. So it's beside the sparkly, it's having this very interesting elements to this. So maybe paint in that way. Let's go ahead, Alt or Option, click on the mask, hide everything, and let's go paint in. And I'm just start painting on a hair. And you can see it's create a very nice cleaning, create a very much as painting effect. Okay, let's like a painter. That's what we're doing. We're just painting here on her hair around. You know what? Let's go over. Yes, I do like on a dress, it's add kind of nice to this. So let's go ahead. Just go over dress as well. I don't want to go too much, but I want to add some of the texturing and this 
filter also will hide some of those um, lines. You remember right here we had and I think it's instead the square it's add this kind of twisty magical almost look on the dress. Well, let's go right there a little bit more. go some lines okay yeah, I think it's look cleaner right there okay so we kind of created let's go closer like right there I think need add on a hair Yep, right there, just a little bit. Okay, and let's look around here as well. Okay, there you go. So and if you look on a hair, this is what before and after. It's more paint cleaning kind of look. Okay, let's go ahead. Next, we're going to add some dodge and burn to this and for this we'll go create new layer and we're going to fill this layer with 50 percent gray you can do on a clear if you prefer um, it's just what i used to do and we'll switch to soft light we'll have it black and white so we'll go between soft brush we want to soft round brush we want to be like 10 percent opacity on a black so we'll start add some shadowing and you can see I'm just first easy way to do it just go where shadow already exists so you can start emphasize them so let's go closer to the eye and remember what it says we'll just start darken those eyes so we'll just have it like black eyes okay let's go to increase slightly make a little bit darker under okay, a little bit on the lips switch to the white and i used x for the white let's add a little bit more sparkly on the nose kind of highlights Add whites under eyes, which is will make eyes pop up even more as a dark. Okay, right here. Let's zoom out. There you go. It's look much darker now. Okay, let's go back with the inner hair. Add a little bit shadows in the area where we with a hair remember so the shadows it's luminosity it's what give it us shape and it's what we doing right now with a black and white and I'm using X key to kind of switch between background and foreground color so I'm just doing it these creating or more shadows in some elements or less shadows highlights so I'm changing shape of the how it will look or in some cases just emphasizing so but right there for example we can add a little bit more like wrinkles look almost and use this as your brush as you drawing see okay right there we'll just add more lines to this little bit darker and this is all just preparing our model when we start kind of adding okay let's zoom out look at the model and right here we have it before Dutch and burn and after you can see it's add a little bit more character kind of a little bit more dimensions in this case okay so we're done with eyes we did it I think the eyes look yeah I think the eyes look darker you know what maybe just a little bit 
pinch more darkness. Uh, yeah, we'll make her evil. Okay, kind of like add more. It's there. Yeah, top one. Let's remove some white. So kind of like almost line go right there. Hide a little bit on her shoulders. Add darkness. Okay. There you go. Let's zoom out. There you go. I think her face looked dark enough. Yep. Yeah. That will work. Okay. So this time we have our model. So I'm going to select all of this and group together. Let's go call its model. So I kind of know this is all of our background and models so next we can apply stuff over um, this is our backdrop this is our throne um, maybe I'm not sure about this because I say when we start putting this guy behind we maybe want to kind of apply it so let's go on this guy and hide him out and because I'm not sure what if it will look one way or another I'm just going very roughly put them in and see if I want to put it this over throne or kind of if I want to put it like right there or put him behind the throne well, you know this one is look kind of nice So maybe just a leaf. Okay, maybe just take him like right there and put it behind. I think that will maybe work better. Okay, let's go center. Looking on our lines. Let's get closer. And I think we can paint kind of like close enough here okay, let's go to X white will switch we could um, take also some with color selection tool but in many cases will be work just fine okay we need a 10% actually we need softer and as we're doing you can see we're creating shadows behind her because we're going to use it shadows overall but that way we don't need to worry too much it will blend easier and better this way we can actually blend on him and with these techniques because kind of blending he will blend with a coloring background as well easier Okay, now on her, which is a throne right there, let's go click on the um, throne itself and one zero. So let's go remove the throne from behind of her because I like the, the guy standing there better. Okay, but right there we want to actually bring back in. So like around here we go and we'll just start painting back in some of this um, closer to her the seat okay like right there okay. leave it by her leg Let's go to 70 a little bit higher so it'll be faster problem with doing this little bit faster then we start introducing problems like right here by her leg okay x brush let's go 20 percent and i'm using shortcut 
So the one thing um, I recommend you to do, it is learn shortcuts. And they do help because you don't need to learn all of them at the same time. But what you want to do is learn, okay, yeah, this one, okay. But you want to learn a um, few of them per each session. So afterwards, when you're done, after a week, you actually will know most of shortcuts that you ever need to use in Photoshop. And you always can add more as you go along. Okay, so right there. And with these blending techniques, you can see how, okay, like right there, we can bring in some shadowing removing right here i just see some lines poking through him so it's what i'm doing i'm taking this background and just removing and leaving background same as was her original backdrop so it's reason why that will get darker but also it will blend even better with what we want to do okay let's go zoom out and look there we have it so far. Okay, let's go and we can re-enable those two and re-enable floor. So I think the next, you know what, maybe let's extend our floor a little bit more. So what we're going to do, just bring like right there maybe. Yeah, I think we can go around here and we'll just start blending in edge of the floor that will just create normal mask take tool and kind of you can see we can start from very soft and we'll put it all of that stuff in a shadows okay and we can start blending a little bit better right here by her feet some of that stuff from cloud will will hide with actually fog so we'll reuse and this is what's happening when you start creating sometimes you will analyzing what you can reuse or how you can reuse and how you can what you can hide and what elements so we can do that way okay right here and we definitely need it yeah we'll we'll hide a little bit more around there but we will need to put it fog. Okay, I'm just going to blend a little bit more. And it's look more magical, kind of interesting how the ground come up. I like it. Okay, right there. Okay, so it's kind of stuck working. Um, you know what, and we have even space for these guys move them push them a little bit more out this way and that gargoyle just moves slightly out we could bring closer to her maybe on the same level as her feet or even behind and what i'm doing if you look right here we have a line this is what we're going to control kind of focusing on this so in that way if we have this guy like getting here it's meaning he far away from her if we bring him closer now here on the same line with her and maybe this is what i want to do just press like a little bit behind almost there you go so he overlapped throne look closer and then we start blending so now we're kind of a little bit better blending here um this one is look okay we'll just leave it like right there i think it's come up nice okay so let's go move closer a little bit and i will start working with the shadows afterwards it will bring better um also you know if we do this we can just bring like right there a little bit closer to shrink here in the middle yep she's in the middle probably around there 
okay I'm deleting um, unneeded elements so it will be faster a little bit and I think overall positioning is okay next what we need to do is start adding shadows um, dimensional shadows so between the elements like for example under shadows under our um, gargoyles we need shadow behind her and take all backdrop drop in a shadow kind of more and we still have their element let me see what is this nope it's not that I'm just looking yeah right there it is let's look alt click on a mask and that is what we have problem with there you notice we have a too dark so let's increase five and I'm just a <laughs> kind of going and fixing a little bit on it. so it will be look a little bit even because otherwise it start um, poking through there you go okay so it should fix yep right there I should fix a little bit better on this case okay let's go ahead and add some shadows uh, first we'll have this backdrop right here so for this we'll go create one um, layer above we'll go to fill up with 50 percent gray okay and we'll go to hold down alt or option and move your mouse so we can clip it clip it will affect only the below layer so this is what we want and let's switch to soft light take our brush well, look how dark it is we don't want this way we want 10 percent opacity and we can start kind of brushing in some of those try to stay a little bit away from the bottom because we need still blending but i want just to brush overall behind them okay so it's kind of like very darker area will be there we'll also will add a little bit of the fog and debris other behind but general i'm just want to take this and make it darker okay i think this way will work better okay so what we added let's check before and after yeah it's add a little bit darkness which is good okay let's go next it is okay our throne so let's go to add a little bit to our throne. We create again, dodge and burn for this as well. Okay, 50% gray. Link to our throne. Let's go select soft light. And what I want to do is actually add a little bit closer. So we go like right there. And now we need to add shadows where she's sitting. Because as she's sitting, she will cast shadows. And it's what we're doing same like with those guys gargoyles so we want to add shadows from her legs right there so just make it darker okay so next we have our floor and a floor same things we'll go create dodge and burn for this okay link it and apply soft light so now we can actually going and with this we want to add remember same stay a little bit away because we will continue we'll doing some stuff there but i want just add a little bit more focus like on her so these corners you go darker and just right here so overall I'm just darkening some of these corners okay next if we look it will be if I'm right our this model which is same we can apply shadows on um, as well and I think we can apply just behind so it's almost like behind her will cast shadows and other things let's create another dodge and burn okay 
cast it soft light okay, and we'll just go like behind her casting okay, a little bit darker on his wings his hands so almost like he's staying behind okay now we can work on these two guys before we'll do this we actually want to create a shadow under them okay and for this we'll need to create new layers but not on the top but below them okay so let's go ahead and create new layer and let's call this shadows the couple things will just create another one and more shadows we technically could put it everything on just one layer for both of them but in case if we want reposition i'd recommend just to link to specific one or another one that way if we need it change them we can change a very easy position so let's go ahead select a brush we're going to select somewhere darker cut out with alt uh, let's go to first shadows for this one and you know what let me rename it i'll go name this on the right side from me and that one left it doesn't matter how you name it it just helped me know which one is what Okay, shadows, we want to switch to multiply mode. Multiply mode will darken and as well, it will produce um, coloring casting. So it's kind of nice about this. Okay, now we can start painting shadow under. And usually we'll have three different type of shadows applied. One shadow, it's very close up and usually very dark. And if you like, look on a, right here, her toes, you can see, see how dark this one going like right they see the dark dark line very close this is one shadow which is dark but also you can see softer a little bit bigger and that is soft shadow so what we're going to do is simulate this so we'll go select a very dark one closer okay and let's go maybe even 20 percent so it's like a very very close one dark going okay and Okay, let's go right here just add very very dark okay let's zoom out okay right there so we can separate layers but i think we'll do on the same next we'll just increase size and we'll just make a little bit softer and right there like the tail going okay let's go zoom out increase in size overall i'm just looking where is the gonna go like right there okay so this is the two shadows but you notice how feet does not match because what we have it it is rosty coloring or uh, reflective shadows and this is usually will go on top above we'll clip to our model our shadows okay let me type properly so that one same will switch to multiply and what we want to select color of the floor close by and we'll start painting and you see what's happening right there we start matching and this is what's happened like with the foot you can see reflective shadows okay we'll do here and we'll do also around this feet and certainly it's a start matching because the model reflect a little bit better we're going to add also more shadows around the feet because it's creating this same coloring okay there you go now it is model sitting on a floor so this one is still floating so we'll do same things first with the shadows we'll go closer okay let's go to 20 percent and a very very close up very hard maybe even 30 percent so we can go faster and let's go switch to multiply mode i'm like why does not get darker there you go so we'll go there put it by the hands very short very hard shadows okay a little bit right there on the back okay maybe just a little bit right here 
Okay, same under this food. There you go. Let's go zoom out, set to 10% opacity on our brush and just add general shadows because how he's sitting, he should cast like around there. And we'll do a little bit more after, but again, okay, right here. And let's go one above, create layer. Link it, clip at this two below, switch to multiply mode. And now we'll just go over. feet and hands so it's kind of almost like reflecting from the ground that's what happened because you can see right there feet it's very visible till we fix it and after you don't have this line so it's matching okay let's go also add a little bit more coloring going from the ground more on the stomach There you go. Let's zoom out so you can see how it's going. You know, maybe a little bit of wings as well. So right here we have it actually nice now applied. Um, next we want to apply general shadows. Let's go create one. Um, maybe this is what do we have it. Okay, this is the right one. Right here below. Let's create new layer. Let's go call global shadows. I'll go switch to the multiply mode. 10% opacity. Again, we can just switch to the gray color. And this one is just general one add even to her feet. Just overall kind of going shadowing overall because we can apply Just like this around there on the seats okay notice where the lights going lights going from our not directly from top but from right about right about and for this let's just create um, beam so we can preview and we'll go to select white color Let's go 10%, uh, 100%. If we're going from there, that will help us. One click, hold down shift, move and click again. And you can create a straight line. So we can like create almost, you can see kind of beams. That is, will just help us to identify where the light's coming from in this case. Okay, okay, let's go to, let's take a little bit time, it's responding kind of slow. Okay, so we have it right there. Let's make a little bit smaller beams. Okay, next, let's go to a filter, blur, Gaussian blur, we probably will switch something to this, a little bit more like right there and switch to the soft light we'll probably kind of play with this a little bit plus minus will depend uh, soft light when we start adding a little bit another shadows to this okay but we can see it um let's go next add some of the fog and that one will be oops it's my um went to this one except what i want to do instead of full i have it fog k control command j to duplicate it and we want to put it this fog below so like right uh, let's go shadows right back just before this guy so we'll go right here okay that is our throne but we put it one below Okay, and we need to put it another ones. Let's duplicate it that one and we'll put it one here. So this is um 
back fog. Okay, and this is we'll try to create these layers. So those layers is what help us add dimension to this. Um, so right here, this is our backdrop. So that one fog will be between model and a backdrop. We'll go select brush and let's go to use it Ron's fog. I'm just going to select one fog, zero, and we'll just go right there. You can see them a little bit on the back. Let's increase the size of the brush. Kind of right there. Okay, let's go again. Make it bigger. Be careful, let's don't put it closer on the model. We don't want there, but we want to put it on the background. So it's creating a little bit of that distortion. Okay, we also can select the darker color and just mix it, add a little bit more greenish to this. So this is our kind of back fog. Let's go to um, fog and put it right above. So right there is our back model. So it's a background and model. This is, should go just above our um, background, which is will be a little bit more. So we did one and it's showing on the back. This one will be more visible. So and we can Add this way, let's go switch. Like there, let's go to maybe a past increase. Okay, so next let's go add this one is our throne. Uh, we could add, but I think we're okay. We'll after edit, so we'll leave it here. This is our floor, and let's just add before floor. Mostly what I want to do is just add a few right here, just behind this guys, like right there, okay? And we'll switch this to soft light. So we just make this edge, when we have this blending edge, just hiding a little bit better, I think, that way. Okay, let's go next. This is our big guy, and we'll just create above him. The gargoyle fog, so we'll just create right there. With him, let's select something else. Uh, we'll just need to be careful, because again, if we put it right there, it will go over our models. We don't necessarily want it, but we want mostly what I want to do, it's isolated right there see how blending but if we start putting his hand you can see how the model this one have it come up so it's we have this distancing removing with the wings and all that stuff so it's all what we've done just help us adding this layers of dimensions between all of them okay right there so now we have it our shadows we find with this another shadow we have it one goblin and we actually can go all the way up to beam right here our top fog we can start using this one and you notice what's happening we can put it up front and start adding because we have this nice clouds kind of almost I think we can find another fog to create it coming from there and it's probably will be mix of them okay yeah let's go right there one cover with the foot we'll have it different okay that is a softer one yeah let's go use it softer and what I want to do it's open brush properties my settings and in a brush settings we're going to change dynamic and shape for this Increase jaggering. Let's add angles. So it's all rotate. A little bit of randomness on this. 
okay and we'll go on scattering a little bit on scatter too much just a little bit on scattering we'll pop there you go so it just help us if you notice when we're creating it's kind of like moving so it's a little bit randomizing I'm not sure if I like this one as will help but I think when you create more than just that let's, let's create a bigger size yeah I don't necessarily like this one so let's go ahead select maybe this one yeah add different brushes and that's what's happening you don't want to necessarily just create one um, because you can see instantly repetition if we're doing those ones let's set this right here add blending a little bit around there okay increase size actually you know what instead size let's switch to different one Yep, that will work on the edge. Maybe somewhere like right there. Yeah, okay. So you can see what we've done. We just add this fog, which is hiding. Let's go create a new layer. And um, let's call it dirt. I just like add a little bit more elements don't worry about those angles we're actually going to cover them and for the dirt we're going to use a powder brush so right here we have it our powder brush from Ron's and you can see it's actually creating a very nice um, kind of powder I will select the color closer to this so we'll add it's creating this noise kind of nice beautiful Grinch noise and it's already after made it so I just want to select colors closest color we can right there and I'm just adding this noise which is adding kind of almost like a dirt or something floating in the air those particles okay there you go so we're creating them okay let's go zoom out let's go next we'll go another um, global dodge and burn creating this is will go affect everything go gray color 100% gray will switch to the soft light right click select soft round brush switch to the black 10% opacity and what I'm doing is just to now start darken over all our elements okay so that way we can brighten like around her just make it a little bit this area brighter kind of almost like sun coming and the fear of that sound because it's stone them okay and we'll just do more dark right there so kind of almost the creature of the shadows so we can hiding more around the wings you know what also i'm looking on these guys and one on the right one this one so let's go to select his shadows like right there all three and you know what if we move just slightly so he overlap a little bit with her maybe but he should cast shadows no let's go back 
like right there even yeah mm -hmm. kind of you would move him out to run up or yeah right there I think that's a little bit better even wings cut off I think yeah that one I'm just was thinking overlap her legs but I think that will work fine except right here we have a little bit on this hand on this guy um, something too sharp right there we need it yeah just take another element touch up fog okay brush zero okay hundred percent white I just want to add a little bit more to this like additional fog to that or hide some of these elements you know just make it a little bit smoother that is too bright yeah there you go but let's go with the 30 percent so just the make it blend right there, your feet right there okay let's your shoulders there you go so just overall add kind of you know nicer encapsulations now uh, let's go increase size right there there you go kind of give it a little bit more blending in yeah white I think this one will kind of almost just stepping in yeah there you go okay let's go just add stuff so remove some repetition from seeing and let's look if we decreasing I think just around there probably 92 will be look good okay next what I want to do is add like global glow so for this one we'll go use it aneric um, plugin let's go click generate okay so we have preview let's go switch to x-ray and definitely we need pop-up threshold to accept more lights so we'll see like right there elements which will glow and maybe a little bit more okay and uh, let's go switch from x-ray now we have it glowing about right place I'm going to save let's call it glow okay so here's our glow applied um, let's select um, mask and just a little bit 10% just reduce a little bit on this wing because I think it was brighter I want to keep it here and you can see before and after so it's kind of nice glowing I think to this effect um, next what I want to do is add color correction kind of that will help us to blend together before that let's add general grain and a grain I like to add so it's all these elements have a different grain some smooth some hard uh, by adding global grain will help us to blend them together everything okay right here grain filter noise add noise so 20 should be work and we'll switch to the soft light come closer and we should see yeah nice uniform grain said before because we're using brush we have smooth tools that all have a different grains image render does not versus photo so it's all of this kind of different type of grains by overlaying we're uh, kind of uniforming that grain to make sure they all look like they're done at the same time okay control shift alt e command option alt e to take all images and combine them together 
and uh, we can go maybe go try in the filter forge okay let's go ahead filter filter forge 10 so we'll go open that one and I'm just going to use my um, light filters that I did for the tone and just nicer different type of tone make much easier and faster to apply the color connection overlay and also luminosity over all our image so this is what we're going to do and let's make a little bit faster we also can do this and we'll uh, we'll do after in the selective colors so we'll try to do that way as well okay right here select one preset and I'm just going to bring red a little bit up maybe around there let's look on a cycle nope uh, maybe colder I'm not sure which one I think this one bronze come up a little bit better in this color I think because we don't want too cold for the bronze and let's take saturation just lead it down so I think that way good we'll go click apply it'll take a little bit time to apply this filter okay, so right here we have our color and you can see I like the uniformity so it's bring all image together um, I'm going to reduce about 70% on this uh, let's go select um, creating selective colors and we'll start with the black color as usual I don't want too much crush on this so we'll just add maybe about minus three um, let's take yellow and put it in a blue on the colder colors cyanish blue there you go kind of like this and she gave it red hair I think combination cyan and red will be work very good in this case uh, let's go in our neutral colors and we want to bring a little bit warmer yeah maybe you no know, like the cyan kind of popping up so maybe just keep it around there so let me see yeah I think this coloring coming very good um, we also can look on a red which is you can see kind of her hair and we'll bring a little bit closer on the blacks a little bit more in the black and let's switch more reddish yellow kind of warmer on the red color yeah, like right around there so let's just add a little bit more to this okay and the last step actually before selective colors and the filter forage let's add curves okay and we'll go just take this curve put all the way down select mask and just give it this kind of almost border fill with the oops okay let's go fill with the black color inside so we have it masking going around and we'll go to layer mask and bring feathering over so as you can see just creating this kind of nice vignetting switch to the soft light okay right there I'm sure about this touch up fog you know what let me because with the other ones I'll look dim down a little bit more on that fog now that one need be there okay and let's go just next before selective colors we'll go select type tool let's put our name there you go let's switch to the white color uh, maybe a little bit smaller like right there and I'll just put it somewhere in a corner And make it hidden so it does not distract overall here's our image we have it nice warmer on the middle kind of witch and all this color disappearing so it's creating I think a nice focal point let's go just take everything right there and this is our model before and this is after so it's what we did it 
we extend it, we do the model extend stuff, and we added gargoyles that we created in another application. You saw how you can do it. Similar things you can do with the backgrounds and everything. In some case, if we try to do similar things in 3D, it will take quite a bit long time to establish lights, everything. And beside, we'll need to use a 3D model instead a uh, model that we photo shoot in a studio. But hopefully this video kind of help you to see how you can use a different part to create interesting um, compositing and give you some tools in your next um, work. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, uh, put a comment, make sure this video kind of get a little bit <laughs> more views and it's appreciated because it's helped me with my work. All these elements, wings, uh, gargoyles, everything. If you subscribe to uh, my Patreon channel, if you're my Patreon supporters, you can access for free all those elements and use it in your own work. Again, thank you for watching this video.